Good morning, Dan and Amy. So uh, President Trump yesterday meeting with the Italian prime minister and uh, in the press briefing afterward, uh, he was asked uh, a lot of geopolitical questions, national security related questions. He first offered his remarks on the Paris terrorist attack, learning about it just as he was uh, uh, ascending to the dais to take questions. Our condolences from our country to the people of France. Again, it's happening, it seems. I just saw it as I was walking in, so that's a terrible thing, and it's a very, very terrible thing that's going on in the world today. But it looks uh, like another terrorist attack, and uh, what can you say? It just never ends. We have to be strong, and we have to be vigilant, and I've been saying it for a long time. And on... Um I mean, that's hard to disagree with much of that. Um, He also addressed the the North Korean situation and uh, his recent meeting with uh, President Xi of China. Listen to uh, Trump's transparency, really, in terms of what he's negotiating with the Chinese. It's rather startling. We're slowing up a little bit. I actually told him, I said, you'll make a much better deal on trade if you get rid of this menace or do something about the menace of North Korea, because that's what it is. It's a menace right now. Uh, wow. I mean, <laughs> he's telegraphing that I'll trade trade right. for you uh, sitting down Kim Jong-un. Uh, George uh, Friedman from Stratford, uh, excellent, uh, uh, excellent outlet, and he is a... Uh, well-regarded deep thinker in the area of international relations. Uh, he was on with Tucker Carlson yesterday. He commented on uh, Trump's uh, rather um, unusual transparency on the matter. This has been going on for a long time. It's been going on in the Obama administration. It went on the Bush administration. Uh, now the president has simply said this is the game that the Chinese are playing. Right. It sets up his future move, however. He says, we've been blackmailed the last time on North Korea. Let's get back to trade. But he's made it clear that if they help this time, he's going to cut a better deal. I've never seen a politician do this. In the open, simply admit what the game is. Yeah, I mean, he's just kind of stripping back, past, uh, stripping back the veneer and just calling for what it is. Uh, Freeman, too, in terms of his assessment on the threat that North Korea poses, a nuclear North Korea uh, uh, poses, uh, he had a, a, a good way of kind of understanding North Korea, and despite the fact that it's... Uh, a country with uh, one or two light bulbs in Pyongyang, um, the game that they've played fairly well for their overriding goal, Kim Jong-un's overriding goal, which is the survival of his dictatorship. It has been perfectly predictable. It wants to appear to be weak so that nobody bothers it, crazy so nobody pokes at it because who knows what they'll do, Yes. and ferocious, capable of destroying the world. Right. And even though they are a country that is insignificant by most measures, they have managed to maneuver the Japanese, the South Koreans, the Chinese, the Russians, and the Americans into treating them as an equal. And that is a brilliant move, and they have done that over the years. And you don't have to like them to respect them. They are good at this. For more on this, we're pleased to be joined by our friend, Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Atticott. He's the director of the Center for Terrorism Law. He's a former Army judge in the JAG Corps. Colonel Atticott, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Oh, always a pleasure. Uh, so uh, start with the uh, terrorist attack in Paris, the sixth one in Paris in the last three years. Um, your reaction to the reactions from the politicians in Paris, including Marine Le Pen, who talked about uh, suspending all legal immigration into France until, effectively, France gets a hold of its borders. Well, the killer is identified as Abu Yusuf al Belgiki, who is uh, who is a gunman from Belgium, uh, and ISIS has claimed responsibility. Um, they're, they're in a state of, uh, of war. They just don't call it war like we do, the war on terror. What they do is they amend their domestic criminal code to deal with this problem. Um, I think that's a reasonable step myself, is to is to suspend uh, your immigration policies because if you look at the recent French study that came out last year, it's like it's like they're almost in shock because they realize they have literally millions of Muslims in their country that they have allowed to come into the country that do not want to be French. Uh, they they have no desire to adopt the Code Napoleon. They have large areas of no-go zones where these people embrace Sharia law, which is the antithesis of civil law or common law. 
So, yeah, they've got a serious problem on their hands. And um, I think that's not unreasonable to kind of, you know, decide what culture do you want in your country? Do you want, uh, you know, Sharia law culture, which is the antithesis, again, of freedom? Or do you want uh, Western democracy? But Le Pen is taking it one step further. She's also calling for all French terror suspects to be expelled. So if you're on this list, she wants them essentially rounded up and taken out of the country. Well, if you're not a French citizen, what right do you have to remain in France? I mean, a country has a right to determine who's in its own country. Uh, Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not going to criticize them for taking these measures when they've had hundreds and hundreds of French people have been slaughtered. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and more far more serious, as I indicated, you have huge blocks of your society that reject the very pillars of what the French nation stands for. You heard uh, what uh, President Trump said about uh, trying to triangulate North Korea with the help of the Chinese, and you heard uh, George Friedman's analysis of uh, North Korea and the game that they're playing and how successful, frankly, they've been at it politically. Uh, What's your uh, assessment of the approach to trying to uh, minimize the North Korean threat, particularly to, to South Korea? Well, they've got nuclear weapons, and, you know, all this stuff started. The French, I mean, the, uh, the North Koreans have been playing us like an old violin. There's no doubt about it. In 1995, you had Madeleine Albright come back like, you know, Chamberlain meeting with the, the Fuhrer and said, oh, I've got peace in our time. They've agreed they won't build nuclear weapons. We just have to give them food, cigars, cognac for the deer leader. <laughs> and then, of course, a few years later, they sent off a nuclear weapon, and all the liberals in this country, oh, my golly, they lied to us. Uh, you think? I mean, it's a brutal, murderous, totalitarian regime, and, uh, and we're going to see this again with Iran, because once you have a regime like that with nuclear weapons, they play that card, that's their ace trump, and uh, it's much harder to stop them after they get nuclear weapons. The time to stop these type of rogue nations is before they get nuclear weapons, and I'm talking about Iran, that I think is a far more serious threat than uh, mm-hmm. North Korea, because the North Koreans, it's true, I mean, his main goal is to remain in power. And you can deal with him, and he knows how to play the game. Um, but the Iranians, of course, uh, their mullahs have this end of the world type of syndrome where many of these radical Islamic extremists, they don't care about dying. You know, please kill us. That's how we go to paradise. And is North Korea, Kim Jong un, are they getting their nuclear weapons from Iran? Well, they, they developed the technology, not from Iran. Uh, they've actually helped Iran get their nuclear technology. Oh. And they're assisting them. They've been doing that for a long time. Um, most of their uh, assistance probably came from China uh, to develop these things because the Chinese have used the North Koreans as a card against us for a very long time. On the one hand, they said that these you know, negotiations that have been gone on for 20 years, and they wring their hands, oh, my golly, what can we do? Everybody knows that without China's support, North Korea would dry up and go away. I want to get your reaction. Uh, we'll talk about uh, Trump's plain talk yesterday in terms of his approach with the Chinese in dealing uh, with North Korea. Uh, Homeland Security uh, He's laughing. Secretary <laughs> General John Kelly, in terms of some plain speaking, uh, he said this week something that I rather enjoyed uh, about uh, immigration policy and what Homeland Security does. He said, and I'm quoting him, If lawmakers do not like the laws that we enforce, that we are charged to enforce, that we are sworn to enforce, then they should have the courage and skill to change those laws. Otherwise, they should shut up and support the men and women on the front lines. Uh, That sounds like a guy who's been in the Marine Corps for a while. Yeah, I I love Kelly. I mean, you know, it's again, life is very simple for conservatives. Uh, when we have a conference, for example, it's like, you know, God, guns, barbecue. We get it. The liberals have conferences. The, the banner runs on for like, you know, it's like the epistemological rehabilitation of the concept of social justice. They always have that word in there. In the realm of, you know, what the hell are you people talking about? And same with Trump. I mean, he's got a lot of idiosyncrasies. I don't understand a lot of the things he says. And, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like my cousin Vinny. I shot the clerk. And they write it down. I shot the clerk. And there's your confession. You know, I look at what he does, and what he's been doing in terms of national security has been brilliant. Uh, he slapped down the Syrians, um, and they're not going to use gas anymore. He's let it be known to the Russians that, you know, you're not going to have free reign in Syria. He's dropped the Moab, uh, which is a message heard around the world. He's got ships off of North Korea. Um, he's showing that he's willing to use American muscle, 
Um, and, uh, you know, he's playing very tough. And, and so, you know, that's what I look at is what, not what does he say, because, again, I can't figure out many things he says. And maybe he's a super genius and does this in his businessman skills to get people to come to the table and get what he wants. I have no idea. Uh, I'm just looking at kind of what the results are. Something has to be done with North Korea and with Iran, and we've done nothing for 20 years with either of those two countries. He is Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Atticott, Director of the Center for Terrorism Law, former Army officer in the JAG Corps. Colonel Atticott, thanks so much for joining us again. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line.